Hello, and welcome to another edition of In the Green. I'm Matthew Abel, and our special guest today is Mr. Andrew Acho, who is the Worldwide Director of Environmental Outreach and Strategy for Ford Motor Company. Andy, thanks for coming on the show. Matt, it's a pleasure. Glad to have you here. Uh, Tell us a little bit about what you do as the Worldwide Director of Environmental Outreach and Strategy. It's a pretty <laughs> long title. So. Listen, actually, the title is longer than I am tall, <laughs> so I need to explain it. Essentially, my job at Ford Motor Company is to champion proactive environmental actions that are not required by law. Anything that's good for the environment that we should be doing that we don't have to do. I have a hand in. Well, that's interesting. I think a lot of people would be surprised to learn that Ford has someone doing the job that you're doing. Actually, I've been doing it for 11 years now. Right. Uh, back in 1990, I was in the activity called Corporate Strategy. I had been a worldwide sales and marketing manager for a division of Ford, so I had a lot of international experience. So they put me in Corporate Strategy, and I spent time in Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, Taiwan, India, forming joint ventures. And Bill Ford, who was my boss at that time, said, I have something that's more important for you to do. I like the philosophy that you have on your desk, which says, never confuse motion with action. And I'd like you to do that on the environmental beat. Because at Ford, I don't think we do enough. All we do is meet the law, and that's not enough. So we need to be quite a bit more active in doing things that are good for the environment. Well, that's really interesting. We're, we're glad that to learn that Ford is out there doing these things. And in fact, I've been quite surprised by the variety of projects and the extent that, that you're going to. Could you tell us a little bit about some of the specific projects? Sure. And what's going on? Matt, we started out with something simple that everybody does. We started out with recycling. Okay, we started recycling our paper. We started recycling our cardboard. We started with our business cards being on recycled paper. Uh, we went uh, and took what we had as cardboard for parts that were coming into Ford for a lot of the parts, and we changed those to returnable containers and we found that that's better for the environment. What we found is instead of recycling, which is good, reusing is a lot better. In this particular case, because you have containers that are sturdier, when a high-low driver might hit one container against another, you don't have damage, so you improve quality. Number two, when you open cardboard boxes, there's dust particles, and when right. it goes in a paint shop, that's a problem. Well, with these returnable containers, you don't have that. And in addition, you actually save money. At the Romeo engine plant here in Michigan, mm -hmm. we're saving $4 an engine times 750,000 engines a year, $3 million by doing that. The one that's probably of most interest to your viewers is what we've done in the area of vehicle recycling. You know, today, 94% of all automobiles in North America are actually dismantled at the end of their useful life. There's something in the order of 10 or 11 million vehicles. And of that, more than 75%, closer to 80% of every vehicle actually is recycled. We at Ford decided we wanted to create a demand for the recycled product. All of us as consumers sure. are putting our bottles and other plastic on the curb to be recycled, but it doesn't do any good if there isn't a use. So we formed a team called the Rat Patrol, <laughs> Recycling Action Team with the emphasis on the word action. And we started using materials made from polyethylene terephthalate, otherwise known as pop bottles. We today have parts made from 50 million two-liter plastic soda pop bottles a year. As a matter of fact, to show you a little bit, here's plastic pop bottles turned into t-shirts. This t-shirt is made 50% from recycled pop bottles, again polyethylene terephthalate, and 50% from recycled cotton. We use it for much better purposes. We use it for grill opening reinforcements and things of that nature. Well, this is a good purpose. Oh, it is. It is. I use it playing tennis, and it doesn't <laughs> shrink, and it's, it's a great I, product. And I imagine it'll last darn near forever. It does last. That's right. <laughs> right. And it's better to have it last on your back than in a landfill. <laughs> right. That's for sure. We've also turned uh, pop bottle caps into parts. We use the equivalent of a billion bottle caps today to make heating and air conditioning uh, pieces. Another one that we've uh, done a good job on, or suppliers have, mm -hmm. is nylon from old carpeting. We took carpeting from Ford World headquarters and some other areas, and we asked our suppliers to recycle it into car parts. And to give you an idea, here is a piece of carpeting. Looks like a piece of carpeting. Okay. Right. You take a piece of carpeting like that, and they turn it into fluff like this. I mean, it's actually uh, uh, made 
this fiber is the nylon that comes from the uh, carpeting, and that then is made into nylon pellets. It's melted down. It's melted down imagine. and then made into pellets. pellets. And then what we do is we have our suppliers make three million air cleaner housings a year out of the nylon from carpeting. And the amount of carpeting that we use every year just for this component alone, because we're so big, mm -hmm. is 27 million square feet. Now that's enough wow. to cover all the floors of the um, uh, China's square uh, five times over every year. I mean, so that's how much we keep from going to landfills. That's a lot of carpet. And that's a pretty durable product, I'm sure. It is. As a matter of fact, we had two guidelines, Matt. In order to use recycled materials in our vehicles, we said, number one, the product had to be as good as or better than the product we replace or we won't use it. Because we're not going to sacrifice durability, quality, or reliability if we're going to use a component. That's not fair to the consumer. Right. And number two, it had to make financial sense. And all of these parts that I'm talking about are equal price or lower cost than what we were using before. Right. Now, you brought a, what we call in the industry a B-roll, which is a, a piece of footage of tape um, that shows, well, could you introduce it? And yeah, tell what, what we've been doing, be. Matt, is one of the things we did is recycled uh, plastic, but we've also been working on recycled tires since 1992. 1993, we sent out worldwide recycling guidelines. In 1997, we finally started using recycled material in tires, none of which has failed. So what we're doing today now is taking tires that we have and we're having them cut up into pieces. We're having them cryogenically frozen to 180 degrees below zero. Ew. We're having them shattered into millions of pieces. Then we draw all of the metal away from it and that metal is recycled. You blow off all the fiber and what you have left is crumb rubber. And that crumb rubber is a very good resource for a lot of environmentally responsible uses. What happens today is 45% of all tires at the end of their useful life are used to burn tire-derived fuel. 30% of tires today actually go to landfills. Well, that's not the best purpose for tires. So what we're trying to do is be the uh, chemistry equivalent of uh, being advocates to make these parts out of the recycled crumb rubber. And we have lots of examples that I can talk to you about. Right, it seems to me that um, all the tire burning, in fact, they just built a new tire burning facility, I think in Cadillac, in that area. And there's a lot of concern by my friends in the environmental movement, obviously, that, uh, that the waste products, the air pollution from that is fairly substantial. Well, I can so. tell you at Ford Motor Company what we've decided to do with all of the tires coming from our Ford and Lincoln Mercury dealers, none of them are going to be burned. None of them are going to landfills. And what we're doing is we're taking this crumb rubber and we've donated some. We 50 miles of roads are being built in Phoenix, Arizona as we speak mm -hmm. uh, with rubberized asphalt. And we're having a study done by Arizona State University to document the benefits of rubberized asphalt. We believe it lasts longer, we believe it provides quieter operation, and we believe it provides improved fuel economy. We've also supplied it for schools as mats, so in case kids fall, it's a lot safer. Mm -hmm. uh, now has the company test, excuse me, has the ahead. company tested the um, rubberized asphalt, or I mean, you must have some idea that it's going to work and, and be pretty good, but... Yeah, we're not, uh, we're not the inventors of this process. Arizona has been using it for some 20 years. The Federal Highway Administration, Department of Transportation, there's a gentleman by the name of Byron Lord who heads up research, is a major advocate of this, and he's one of our major supporters. It makes a lot we of sense. We work with the Environmental Protection Agency. Uh, there's a gentleman by the name of Paul Roosh uh, in Chicago who is another advocate, and what we have done is look to them to tell us what are the applications that make sense. So in addition to roads, we've done parking lots. In that clip that you just saw, what they were doing is paving the parking lot for the Detroit Lions training facility in Allen Park. Uh, so they have benefits in those kinds of applications, but we also have them in running tracks. We've donated some of the crumb rubber, some of the poor schools that couldn't afford a running track, our rubber helps reduce the cost because we've donated the rubber itself. Right. So they have a running track. In addition to that, 
a horse farm. So horses can walk on these recycled tires and it's quieter, it makes the horses calmer, and it allows the inner city kids to be able to go to the farm, work with the horses, and it's a lot better for everybody. Wow, all the way around. That's pretty neat. Um, do you want to talk about some other products? Uh, well, I guess recycled rubber is one of the main items that you guys run into in, well, in now the auto is. business. It, it hasn't but. really been for the most part because, as I said, 30% of all tires go to landfills. And we felt we ought to be a catalyst. That probably won't happen as much. I mean, we can hopefully keep them out of landfills and... Well, in Pelletize landfills, them, they, don't, they don't really serve a purpose in landfills. You have mosquitoes, sure. you have fires, you have all kinds of different things, none of which you really like. But if you can find a good purpose, we're not in the tire recycling business ourselves. So what we do is we hired a company to collect these tires from Ford and Lincoln Mercury dealers, mm -hmm. make sure every one of them is destroyed, every one of them is cut up, every one of them is recycled, and then the component, the tire crumb, is then used in these environmentally responsible applications. That's super. And I imagine we'll get um, better roads from that. Uh, well, less expensive so. and... Uh, I, no, <clears> that's the only, that's one of the elements that makes this not uh, accepted widely. It is, uh, these roads are used in Arizona, mm -hmm. they're used in Texas, they're used in California, they're used in Florida. What we're hoping to do is introduce it uh, we're working with New Mexico to see if we can do 110 miles and provide the rubber for that. The roads cost more. Mm -hmm. The initial cost is higher. Okay. However, because it lasts longer, you're absolutely right, it is cheaper if you look at it. In the long run, over time. Exactly. Right. Which is, I mean, we're going to need roads 20 years from now, I would think. And isn't it better if you don't replace it as frequently? Certainly. Not only certainly. from a cost standpoint, but from a inconvenience con to the motorists and the to all time. of us. That's right. Don't Absolutely. they say that there are two seasons? You've got winter and you've got construction. <laughs> That's Michigan for you. <laughs> right. Um, I guess we have just one more minute before uh, we're going to take a break. And when we come back from the break, we're going to show uh, the other video that you brought and um, show some of the other good things that Ford Motor Company is doing. Worldwide. Well, I look forward to doing that. One of the things, if any of your uh, viewers are interested, the young people or teachers, we have something that you can offer through your studio is helping the planet from A to Z That's cute. with 26 ideas on how kids can help the environment. Because all of us, all of us need to be keepers of the environment, not just users of it. Right, absolutely. If there are some school teachers or others who are watching who would like to get copies of this, aside from contacting us, is there a, a number or an address where they could contact they you? They can or email me. Uh, my first, the first letter of my name, my last name, so it's a acho a c h o at Ford dot com. That's a a c h o at Ford dot com. That's right. Right. Okay, and um, we have another second, I guess, but uh, we're going to uh, go to a break. How long have you been at Ford totally? 40 years. And uh, have you seen a lot of changes in the company in that time? I have time? seen a considerable amount of change, but I've also had something in the order of magnitude of 25 different jobs. I've worked in quality control, product engineering, sales and marketing. I've worked in finance. I've worked in uh, Ford Tractor and all of the rest. Wow, that's great. Um, again, my name is Matthew Abel. We're here with Andy Acho from Ford Motor Company, and we'll be back in just a moment. from In the Green. Taxes are a way to share the expenses of government. A good tax is a fair way to divide up that expense. What the government spends is the people's money. So safeguards have been set up to make sure the people's money is spent honestly. When we criticize our government and political leaders for high taxes, inflation, or injustice in law enforcement, we're in fact criticizing our own decisions. We make the laws we live under. By voting or failing to vote, we elect our leaders to public office. So contact 
to your local Secretary of State office and register to vote today. I'm Marilyn McDermott. Thank you. Welcome back to In the Green. I'm Matthew Abel, and our guest today is Andy Acho of Ford Motor Company. He's the Worldwide Director of Environmental Outreach and Strategy. Andy, um, you brought another piece of tape for us. Would mm -hmm. you like to introduce that and tell us a little bit about it? Matt, what we have at Ford is 16 hours of community service that we allow our employees to go and do some good things. Bill Ford says that there's a difference between a good company and a great company. A good company provides excellent products and services. A great company not only does that, but strives to make the world a better place. Here, we have an example of what we did last May 15th, uh, where 500 employees got together and we helped to clean the Rouge River over and above what Friends of the Rouge has where our employees volunteer for that. Okay, and so this is the Rouge River cleanup? That's right. Part, part of the Rouge the River The third cleanup. year of the Rouge River cleanup. And every year, Bill Ford, our chairman, has been there the entire day. And he gets paid too, right? He no, gets I'm paid just kidding, too. Actually, he, he's not <laughs> earning a, a salary. Really? But um, all the employees are paid for this community service That's correct. time. That's correct. Right. So they can volunteer to do that or not. Well, let's take a look at the tape and we'll talk some more when we come back from Okay. That. Ford has a long history of being a leader in the communities, and in my mind, we can never do enough. There is so much good that we can do, just given a little bit of time. Look at what we've created here in just one day. If everyone in the world just took one day to do one thing, we could really do a lot in this world, make a tremendous difference. Not even a dreary day could dampen the community spirit of more than 400 Ford employees who honored their commitment to participate in the third annual Rouge River Cleanup. They are caring employees that really do believe that Ford Motor Company ought to be a good corporate citizen. They want to do their part in doing that. At Ford Field, adjacent to the Rouge River, employees traded keyboards and palm pilots for hammers and drills as they created man-made homes for birds, bats, and other wildlife. They also helped break up numerous log jams in the river and remove unwanted plants from the area. Others worked to create a new path through the park, while colleagues planted thousands of native shrubs, flowers, and trees. It's great to come back later on with your family. You're out here and saying, hey, mom, plant that tree out here, and we can walk on the nature trail and see what we did. So I think it's a great option for all of us to work as a team together and come out here and give back something to the community. I, I, I grew up uh, not too far from here, so it's a lot of fun to come back to the old neighborhood and uh, uh, clean up some of the areas, especially uh, repair some of the flood damage that was done from the Rouge. And uh, it's uh, 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 a lot of hard work, but a day well spent. So, uh, yeah, I really enjoy this. Another benefit of the Rouge River Cleanup Project is the camaraderie and partnerships that are formed with other people and groups in the community. We're working with the city, we're the University of Michigan Dearborn, Friends of the Rouge, and other organizations, Wayne County, and others throughout to help establish these partnerships. And you can, it's a synergistic effect. You get a lot more accomplished working in partnerships. Are the efforts of Ford Motor Company and its employees making a difference? Last year at Ford Park alone, the employee work that was done over here, the Parks and Rec Department told us that uh, what our employees did in one day would have taken them three years to accomplish. So that's the power of uniting Ford employees. Restoring the Rouge River as a viable resource for the community is a part of a larger vision of company chairman Bill Ford. What, what I would love to see is not only the Rouge manufacturing facility uh, totally transformed into a vision of what 21st century manufacturing can be, but I'd love to link the whole Rouge River corridor from the assembly plant to the uh, Greenfield Village to Fairlane Estate and one day have boat tours uh, going through this whole area so that uh, people can see firsthand the amazing history that exists right along the Rouge. Meanwhile, in front of the Rouge office building, employees were busy planting flowers and shrubs to create what is called a woodland environment. 
And we're back. Welcome back to In the Green. That was quite some uh, tape there, Andy. It looked like a lot of people from Ford Motor Company were working well, pretty hard. it's kind of neat. I mean, you know, we put out a message to our Southeast Michigan employees to ask if they could volunteer. I asked for 500 volunteers, and in 45 minutes, we had to shut down my computer because we had 580 <laughs> volunteers. So it's kind of neat. Well, it's a day to work outside and it help is. the environment. It is. And it is. And it is make you feel good about what you're doing. Right. Um, I was asking you during the break, and maybe you could just touch on it. I'm curious whether Ford Motor Company goes and looks at the waste products that it generates and finds ways to use those as raw products, either in, in Ford Motor or in some other industry. Can you sell those to other locations? Or? Well, as a matter of fact, uh, we used to recycle quite a bit out of our plants. In fact, we saved $14 million by doing that. And then we decided, you know, that's not good enough. We shouldn't have the waste products to begin with because right. waste is not good. It's reduce is ought to be our first priority, then reuse and finally recycle. And so as a result, we now have a new program called Total Waste Management. What we do is we bring in a supplier who used to take our things out of the plant, and the more he took out, the more we paid them. Now it's the opposite. The more you take out, the less we're going to pay you. We're going to provide an incentive for you to help us reduce our waste. And so the more you reduce our waste, the more we're going to pay you. And it's really working. It's saving a lot, and it's minimizing waste. But some of the waste products are being used. There's some, some of the paint sludge is being used to make some bricks, for instance. Uh, our scientists are looking at uh, being able to use waste for fuel. Uh, I was in uh, Bangkok, Thailand uh, earlier, no, it was last year now, uh, last year, where they have a whole segment of uh, research going on on that. At Ford, more than 50% of our scientific research laboratory budget goes to environmental issues. I mean, we have more types of alternative fuel vehicles than any other manufacturer on Earth. And we're looking at a number of other things, and that's just one of many things we're looking at. I imagine there's a lot of research and development going on right now in alternative fuel vehicles. Oh, of course, and of course. And we have more Ford vehicles of alternative fuel variety out there, but it's in low volume because it doesn't meet the consumer demand of having a vehicle that can meet all their purposes. Electric vehicle, for instance, we talk about right. it not having any pollution. But at the same time, you can only go 50 or 70 miles. Well, that doesn't serve most people's purposes. Can't get a quick recharge or a And you can't get a quick a battery, recharge. You're absolutely right. right. So that's why what we have to do is find ways to be able to come up with, and since they like sports utility vehicles, a sports utility vehicle that'll get you 40 miles to the gallon, that'll be able to be a hybrid, and we will have that by the end of 2003. And it'll be the cleanest sports utility vehicle on the planet. I've heard that. Is that the escape? That's the, the escape. escape. That's, that's right. Going to well, be you're on top of it. And, well, when you have a program called it. In the Green, right. of course you're on top of that kind of thing. <laughs> and we're looking forward to seeing those Ford Escapes and yeah. test driving them. Well, I'll you know. tell you, when it's manufactured, it'll be manufactured at a Ford plant that is ISO 14001 certified. And that might be a new term to some of your uh, uh, people who view this program. ISO 14000 is an environmental management system where all aspects of the environment, air, land, and water, have to be addressed with a system in place to make sure you're doing the right thing. We at Ford are the only major automotive manufacturer to have each and every one of our 104 plants in 25 countries certified to this international standard. And they are all certified? Every one of them is certified. Now that doesn't mean that there is no waste product of course or, that, not. or that it's not environmentally harmful, but you're attempting to address it and reduce that as well, much as possible. I'm, right? I'm not sure you can say it's not environmentally harmful. You can say that there are waste products what it is right. is we have a system to address all things because meeting the law is the minimum that we use. I mean, people say to me sometimes, in fact, members of the press, uh, that's great that you're environmentally responsible and proactive here. What about places like Mexico or Brazil? Well, let me tell you, even in places like that, in Mexico, we have a wastewater treatment plant that's state of the art where the water coming out of our plant after we use it is cleaner than the water coming in. As a <laughs> matter amazing. of fact, as a result of the kinds of systems that we have, we have created, in Brazil, for instance, the wastewater coming out of our plant is so clean, we've created a lake that's teeming with birds and fish. And we have something called wildlife at work sites. We have a number of sites where our employees are planting trees and putting up birdhouses, and we have 30 such sites around the Ford Motor Company empire. Now, is that Ford Motor Company property, generally? Where Ford that's Motor happening? Company property that we're doing this, and in some cases, like Romeo, they have rails to trails. Uh, in other places, in Kansas City, we're creating a corporate land for learning 
so that people in the neighborhoods can come around and have a place to walk in the woods. Oh. And there, there's some neat things that we're trying That's to do. Great. Andy, I think we only have a, another minute or two, but you were telling me about the Christmas card project. Yes, that's, that's important. In fact, we would appreciate uh, your viewers if they could help us participate with this. There's a group of young people uh, from St. Jude's Ranch for Children. It's a home for abused, neglected kids. Mm -hmm. They're primarily located in Nevada, and they're also located in Texas. These kids have been sexually abused. They've been taken away from their parents. They, all of them have been abused one way or another. And these kids are able to take old greeting cards, Christmas cards, birthday cards, and what they do is they trim the card, they paste it on recycled paper, and make a new card out of it that's resold, and they learn two things, Matt. Number one, they learn that you can take a throwaway item like a Christmas card or a birthday card, make it valuable to society, and they see themselves being made valuable to society as throwaway kids. And number two, because they come back from three or four generations of welfare, and they get paid for each and every one of these things that they do, they learn to earn. So it's workfare, not welfare. And we fly six kids in every year to attend the North American International Auto Show. They're at the Ford Division display, so anybody who's got cards can bring them to the Ford Division display. And we sent 600,000 back with the kids at the end of January in 2001. Wow, and the auto show will be coming up about when this show first hits the air. So That's it's right. a good reminder to people, take all your cards if, uh, if you don't want to keep them and uh, take them to the Ford exhibit and recycle them. Um, we just have one more minute, but we were talking about the old Indian philosophy, and I wanted, That's right. you wanted I to think, mention that. I think it's important viewers. for people to realize, you know, one of the things people ask is, why is Ford doing this? Why is Bill Ford so pro-environment? And I think one way to look at it is this Native American saying that goes something like this. This land belongs to all of our people, some of them living, some dead, but most have not yet been born. Most have not yet been born. That's the bottom line of environmental stewardship, that we all have an obligation to help preserve the environment for future generations. That's right. Well, good. Thank you very much for coming on the show, Andy. And, it's a real uh, pleasure. We really have enjoyed having you, and maybe in the future we can talk again and see the new projects that you're doing. Be so, happy to be back. Good. Again, I'm Matthew Abel. You're watching In the Green. Thanks for looking in, and we'll see you again next time. Quite a lot of things going on oh, there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah.